In this video, we'll take a look at the infinite summation of a sequence known as an infinite series. When we speak about the infinite series, again, we're just referring to the summation of a sequence. So my sequence A sub n is made up of A sub 1, comma A sub 2, comma A sub 3, etc. Now this is saying, okay, I've got some function that describes the values of my sequence. I'm going to take that function from 1 to infinity. So now it's not just a sequence that ends, it's an infinite sequence. And instead of just listing the values as I did here, I'm going to find the sum and that sum of all of the values on to infinity is called my infinite series. So there are going to be two questions as we're looking at infinite series. And the first is, does that series converge or diverge? And then if the series converges, what is the sum? And those aren't necessarily easy questions. And I'm going to show you with this example below. So again, when we're determining the convergence of a series, what we're really doing is looking at some new sequence that we create of partial sums. So let's talk about what a partial sum is before we talk about the rest of it. Partial sum, which we denote with a capital S, is the sum of the first n values of a sequence. If, here's my um, function here, my sequence is 2 to the 1 minus n. So my sequence would be 1 comma 1 half comma 1 fourth etc. I want to find whether or not this series will converge. So let's find the sum of the first first one value of the sequence. So the first one value is just 1. Okay, let's find S sub 2, the sum of the first two values of the sequence, 1 plus 1 half or 3 halves. Let's find S 3. S 3 would be 1 plus 1 half plus uh, 1 fourth. So 3 halves or 6 fourths plus 1 fourth is 7 fourths. And then S 4 would be 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. So this was 14 eighths plus 1 is 15 eighths. And again, I could continue. The question is, does this sum, if I continued to add all of the values through infinity, would this converge to some point, to some value? So that's not an easy question to answer. The first one is a little bit easier to say whether or not it converges or diverges. I can see that 1 and 3 halves and 7 fourths and 15 eighths, and I could continue finding values. It seems like it is, in fact, converging. Um, but how do I know for sure? Well, one way is to think about this as a new sequence, 1, 3 halves, 7 fourths, 15 eighths. So just like we did with pattern recognition before, can I pattern recognition, recognition this into some sort of S sub n is equal to something? Well, in fact, I can. And you're not always going to be able to. Um, but I was able to work this one out to be 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And again, feel free to, you know, check my work. Let's say I want S sub 4, which I've already determined is 15 eighths. So let's just double check. If I take 2 to the 4th minus 1, over 2 to the 4 minus 1. That gives me um, 2 to the 4th, which is 16 minus 1, which is 15. And then 2 to the 4 minus 1 is 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. So I feel pretty good about this function. Now the question becomes, does this converge? And if it converges, what is that point that it converges to? What is the sum that it converges to? And to do that, we're actually just going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of this function. And we've done this before. 
we've looked at limits as n approaches infinity. Obviously, we've done a lot of this, and we've been reviewing it in the past several videos. The strategy I'm going to use here is to look at those influential terms. So this is going to be equivalent to the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1. Using those properties of exponents, I can take n minus n minus 1, so 2 to the n minus n minus 1, which gives me 2 to the first, or the limit as n approaches infinity, of 2 to the first, which of course is just 2. So what does that tell me? That tells me if I continue this list over here and find s sub 5, s sub 6, etc., as I continue, it's going to get closer and closer to the value of 2, which is going to be the value of convergence. So this is going to converge, and it's going to converge to a sum of 2. Before we move on to some of the special kinds of tests we can use, let's go ahead and look at one more example. And this one's kind of fun. Again, looking at partial sums, if I were thinking about S sub n, so I don't want to find S sub 1, S sub 2, but just S sub n, so thinking in general terms of this series, that would tell me to take, if n were 1, 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 2, minus 1 over 1 plus 2, which is 3. And if n were 2, again, I'm going to add because it's a summation. If n were 2, it would be 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 3 minus 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 4. If n were 3, it would be 1 over 3 plus 1 minus 1 over 3 plus 2. And I could see that this pattern would continue, and my last values would be whatever n was. So 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 2. Now, looking at this, I can see that there's a specific pattern. I've got minus one-third and plus one-third, and those would cancel. And I have minus one-fourth and plus one-fourth. And I can see that that would continue one-fifth, negative one-fifth, and positive one-fifth. And the only thing that would be left is that my series can now be written, my partial sum can be written as one-half minus one over n plus two. So if I'm looking for whether it converges or diverges, I can look at the limit as n approaches infinity of this function. Well, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 half is 1 half, and the limit as n approaches infinity of this second term, remember 1 divided by an increasingly large number will approach 0. So this is 1 half minus 0, or 1 half. So this is kind of fun. It's called a telescoping sequence, and we, it's telescoping because these values are going to be canceling each other out, leaving us with just the first and the last term, and then we can find the limit of what remains. So I know that was kind of a short video. We didn't go through a bunch of examples, but that's because most of what we learn about in Chapter 9 is going to be all of the different kind of tests that we can use and the strategies and examples for all of those tests. So coming up next, we're going to take a look at the geometric series, and we'll have plenty of examples in that video.